All right, our next speaker is Mose Giordano. He's very well known as a past winner of the Julia Community Prize, in fact. Uh, yeah, uh, he's currently a research software engineer at UCL. Uh, he's done a lot of work on Binary Builder, especially is what he's, he's the hero of, of Binary Builder, really, uh, and has done many, many things uh, in the Julia ecosystem. So much stuff that uh, he's going to talk about a cool looking project that I didn't even know about today. Uh, running Julia on some exotic hardware. Hello. Um, so I will talk about um, running Julia on the intelligence processing unit. Uh, I will start from the acknowledgments. So I actually didn't start this project. This was um, initiated by Emily and Luke at the Simula Institute. I just recently uh, picked up this project and uh, expanded it. And uh, my work was funded by my department, the UCL Center for Advanced Research Computing, and I got also some help from my colleagues. Um, and I want to, th uh, to thank all the people in the um, GPU compiler ecosystem. Uh, so Valentin, Tim, Valentin, Gabriel, and anyone else who was in the chat uh, was asking many stupid questions. Um, and I also got uh, some help from uh, GraphCore engineers. GraphCore is the um, uh, company uh, developing this, um, this accelerator. Uh, and I also used the Simula EXC3 um, uh, system at the beginning of this work. Um, next. Yes. So who I am, if you don't know me, I am, I am Mose. I'm a research software engineer at UCL. I've been using Julia for about seven years now. Um, and also trying it out on some interesting hardware. I have uh, another talk about some new, some new some kind of interesting hardware uh, tomorrow in the uh, Julia 4HPC uh, mini symposium. But most importantly, I'm not a compiler engineer. Uh, maybe you will understand why I'm specifying this uh, later on. What's the IPU? So IPU um, is uh, this accelerator. So uh, you can see here a, um, a picture of a board. Uh, so on each of these boards, you will find four IPUs, these four chips. Um, so each of uh, so this board delivers 1.4 petaflops uh, um, of AI compute means 16-bit um, floating point numbers. Um, so it has a memory of uh, 3.6 gigabytes in total. So each IPU has a 0 0.9 about 900 megabytes of memory. And um, we can go and see a zoom in. So this is one um, IPU, one chip. And um, this has uh, 1,472 cores, and each of them has uh, six threads uh, for a total of almost 9,000 uh, threads. Um, and again, the, the memory um, for the entire chip is uh, 900 megabytes, and uh, you can find some other numbers here. Um, but what uh, sets the IPU apart from the other um, kind of uh, um, systems that we know. So CPU is mainly um, designed for um, scalar processing. You know that you can have multiple cores nowadays, uh, but still each core is basically designed for scalar um, processing. Uh, instead, the GPU is designed for single instruction, multiple data. Um, so you can uh, work, you, you can like, operate on a large uh, quantity of data, but a single instruction at a time. Uh, instead, the IPU is a, a massively parallel, multiple instructions, multiple data. Um, so each core can actually run a different function, a different program um, at a time, which is a, a big difference compared to the uh, GPU. Um, so here are some other numbers to compare the uh, IPU to the to like the NVIDIA 100 GPU. Uh, so again, number of threads. It's about uh, almost 9,000 for the uh, IPU. Instead, it's uh, uh, around uh, 7,000 for the uh, A100. The memory for each core is uh, 600 kilobytes. Um, so um, in the IPU, each core is called a tile, because like, this looks like a tile uh, covering the, uh, the IPU. Um, instead, for the uh, A100, the memory for each uh, streaming, uh, no, it's called SM. I never remember what SM mean, uh, means. But anyway, it's uh, almost um, um, 200 kilobytes. So again, uh, this is much better for the uh, IPU. And if you count for each thread, I think this is dividing by threads, this is um, 100 kilobytes for the uh, IPU and 7 kilobytes for the A100. 
In terms of um, vector registers, uh, for the IPU, it's um, two floats, so um, total um, 64 um, uh, uh, bytes. No, uh, bits, sorry. Um, and pick teraflops is about the same, actually, uh, just slightly better for the uh, IPU, but very little better. Uh, programming the IPU. So um, Graphcore, the company, provides um, this popular SDK, the software development uh, uh, kit, which is written in C++. So if you want to write an um, IPU program, you need to write, basically, like low-level programming, uh, it's in C++. But uh, most of the end users are actually uh, machine learning scientists, and that's why it's called intelligence processing units. Um, and they provide uh, like implementations of PyTorch and TensorFlow uh, that are aware of the IPU. Uh, so this is in Python. But there is this uh, distinction between you can do either low-level programming using a low-level programming language, uh, like in C++, or high-level programming, but only with the tools provided by the, by the vendor. And again, the, at the moment, this is specific to um, the domain of the uh, machine learning. Uh, so there is nothing in between. Like, using a high-level programming language for doing gen uh, more generic programming. So who knows what, what we can do about this. Um, how you program an IPU is basically you need to um, create a graph or operations that you want to run. That's why the company is called GraphCore. Um, so uh, on, um, you define this, uh, this graph, and each vertex is a function, that, and all the functions can be different. So this is, again, a big difference compared to the, to the GPU. So uh, each of these nodes in the graph are uh, the vertices um, of the program, and uh, they can be either different kernels completely or the same kernel but uh, uh, fed with uh, different data. So maybe you can uh, yeah, combine the, the data, uh, the input data to your program in, in a different way. Um, and, and you can have multiple steps. So you can have like a first run of operations in, uh, in all the styles, and then you get some uh, a new um, uh, array tensor uh, in output, which is used as input to some other operations later on. Um, so this is more powerful, but uh, uh, from powers, uh, no, how is it? The, you get more responsibility. <laughs> uh, programming the APU is much more complicated, right? Um, but what's next? What's a compiler? Uh, so this is a uh, kind of the diagram of how a compiler works. This is specific to Julia, but actually the kind of pipeline is in common to most of compilers, I think. So you have um, some uh, source code uh, written usually in a text file. Um, you have the lexing stage, and then the parsing, where you get the abstract uh, syntax tree. And then there is the lowering. Uh, after which you get some other uh, intermediate representation, basically, of your code. Um, and at the, at the end of which, there is the uh, LLVM IR. But this is part, so the first, uh, uh, this green um, region, is part of the front end. So what the Julia front end does. But after that, you can have multiple other stages uh, that are uh, done by the uh, back end, which in this case is the uh, LLVM. Uh, but the important thing is that you can get to the same uh, LLVM IER from different front ends. So like you write some C++ code or Rust or whatever, you can maybe get to the same IER. So whatever the front end has done before doesn't matter anymore. And after that, it's only um, uh, LLVM doing some optimization passes and generating finally the uh, code for the, uh, the native code for, for the device. And this is important because we want to basically generate some IER for our uh, device and then compile the native codes. Um, yeah, so the only existing implementation Julia is based on uh, the LLVM compiler. And in Julia, um, probably most people already know, but you can see the steps of the um, compilation pipeline. So for example, with a dump uh, macro, you can see the AST. And uh, with the code typed macro, you can see the typed um, lowering of the, of the code, and then the LLVM macro, you can see the um, LLVM intermediate representation. You can actually also stop before optimization with some other um, keywords here. Uh, and then finally, there's the code native macro to see the uh, native code generated by the expression, um, this one. And for more details, there is a um, great talk by Valentin about this. Um, but this is important because actually both Julia and the um, compiler used the, um, developed by GraphCore for uh, generating code for the IPU are based on LLVM. So LLVM is basically a common language 
for uh, both Julia and you in the, in the APU. Um, yes. Uh, so basically, we developed this, uh, this package called IPU Toolkit. Uh, it's registered in, uh, in the general registry, so you can install it if you have an IPU. Um, and we use basically uh, Julia to generate the LLVM IR. Um, so the overall goals of this, uh, this package are interfacing the Polar SDK because that's in a way essential for writing the program overall. Uh, but also we wanted to explore uh, Julia's metaprogramming capabilities to simplify how uh, you write the NAPU program and reduce the boilerplate code, which is a lot. Uh, and also use uh, Julia code generation capabilities for uh, generating uh, native code for the um, device. So this is what... Um, the, uh, our, our pipeline of the package looks like. So you write some Julia code and we have the bindings for the popular SDK and also use uh, the um, GPU compiler framework, which at this point is clearly a misnomer, but it's okay, <laughs> uh, to generate some um, LLVM IR. And this is literally written to a file. Uh, and then use the, the um, POPC compiler, is the popular compiler uh, for generating the um, IPU code, uh, native code for the device which uh, then can run on, on, the, um, on the accelerator. Um, yeah, again, we are using GPU compiler for this, um, and we have all the usual GPU compiler uh, limitations. So the code has to be uh, statically inferred and, and compiled, so no dynamic dispatch at runtime. Uh, we cannot use functionalities which require the Julia runtime, uh, for example, the garbage collector, so no memory allocations. So we cannot use this, uh, the scratch for sorting because I had that problem, <laughs> the, the scratch space, but we can change the default um, uh, sorting algorithm when, when we do this. Um, then, uh, and also we cannot use external binary libraries because we don't have access to like x86 libraries on the NDIPU because it's a completely different architecture. Um, so I already mentioned that the LLVM IR that we generate, um, is independent from the target, from the, from the front end in, uh, in the end, uh, but also it's mostly independent from the target that you're generating the code for. And uh, we're actually using this because we're generating in, in this package, we're generating um, code for the x86 target. Uh, yes, for the host basically, which is a hack, but it works. Um, it works as long as you don't use the um, SIMD instructions because uh, it will generate SIMD instructions of registers with uh, like 512 or 256, depending on, on your CPU, which is completely wrong for the, for the IPU because I said it was just a 64 bits. But apart from that, it usually works pretty well. Um, and so GraphCore also recently uh, open sourced their um, fork of LVM, which includes also the backend. Uh, which is called uh, Colossus. And um, I was uh, recently able to link Julia to the fork of LLVM. Uh, so I was able to actually generate LLVM IR for the um, Colossus. Uh, it works in very basic examples. I got some other errors um, in, other, um, in other programs. So it's not very stable, but um, uh, yeah, we, we did it, and also it was the first use of the open source um, uh, fork of um, LLVM by GraphCore. So first uh, code example, uh, there will be very long code because again, it's very verbose how you write a, a IPU program. So here we are just generating um, a computing Pi. This is like an exercise by um, uh, Owen Kwewen, the head of research computing at UCL. He likes trying this um, algorithm for computing Pi on different programming languages. So we are computing Pi. Ah, also, this algorithm is very bad for uh, single precision. And on the IPU, we have to use a single precision. So if we don't get 3.14 and whatever, uh, don't worry. It's OK. Uh, so basically, here we are using this macro at Kotelet to generate the, um, to define the kernel of the functions that we want to run. And we are, um, I think, yeah, we are, um, parallelizing on uh, all the uh, 1,472 cores. And we get blah, 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 blah. We get, as a result, uh, 3.1499. Okay, fine. Uh, and this took uh, um, running on the, on the device. It took um, 123 uh, milliseconds, which is pretty good. On a CPU, it will take, uh, I think, a couple of seconds, something like that. 
Um, I did the same program also for uh, C, uh, written in C++. This is only the codelet. Uh, codelet is um, how they call the, the kernels. And you, I hit the, the um, rest of the program. And this took 0 0.14 seconds, which is actually slightly slower. But there is no magic going on. Uh, it's just Julia generating in this specific case slightly better uh, ER. And, uh, but I believe this is mainly due to Julia um, doing a better um, loop and rolling. Uh, but anyway, I think this was a, a good showcase that Julia can be a valid front end for writing kernels, uh, codelets for, uh, for the IPU. Uh, okay, uh, stochastic rounding um, is also similar to the topic that was introduced before. So R uh, is a continuous set of numbers. Uh, but computers have uh, to use a, a subset, a, a finite subset of, of R, which we call in this uh, case F. So when uh, uh, computers do operations in, um, uh, with limited precision, they have to give a result in F. So your number, um, the, the true result of your operations X has to be approximated by this X hat uh, um, in F. And on CPUs, this is um, usually um, chosen deterministically by rounding always to the nearest uh, uh, number in F. So this is called nearest rounding. But stochastic rounding is an alternative approach for um, rounding uh, your operations. And instead of always rounding to the same number, uh, sometimes you number to, to you, so you round to either the previous or the following number in F uh, with some probability. Uh, one probability could be uh, half and half. But it's more interesting to uh, round with a probability which is proportional to the distance to the uh, to adjacent numbers in F. So in this case, like your actual result in R uh, will be X, and um, sometimes you round to X2, sometimes you, you round to X1, but more often to X2 because it's closer to X2. The, um, uh, the, our result is closer to X2. Um, I was actually introduced to stochastic rounding by Milan again. <laughs> Um, so stochastic rounding is interesting because on average, especially if you use uh, uh, this probability, which is proportional to the distance to the um, uh, numbers, um, because uh, statistically it retains um, some information uh, which is otherwise lost uh, when doing uh, when using the deterministic uh, rounding, and so you can smooth out the numerical rounding errors um, due to uh, limited finite precision. And um, this is especially important when using uh, very low precision floating point numbers like 16 bits. Um, and instead, when you use a uh, deterministic rounding, you introduce a bias, basically, uh, in your operations. Um, and the APU, this is important. I'm talking about this. Because the APU is one of the very few processors in the world available um, which have harder support for stochastic rounding. So. Uh, let's do some exercises. So um, we generate a function which does the uh, naive summation of numbers um, instead of using the sum function in Julia, which will do a pairwise summation, completely defeating my uh, exercise. Uh, and we create an array of 3,000 um, times the number 0 0.9 in uh, half precision, so with uh, 16 bits. And if we do the naive summation, we get a, a, the result 2048, which is very far off from the uh, actual result. And you can make this as bad as you want because actually to, um, 2048 has a machine precision of two. So if you try to add 0 0.9, you always actually adding zero because the machine pre precision is much larger. Um, and instead here, I'm running a program uh, on the IPU uh, with uh, stochastic rounding enabled. So this argument true to this function, which is uh, running the same function again, so uh, naive sum, but uh, uh, 100,000 times. So maybe you can understand that we are going to get a distribution of results instead of a single result, deterministic result. So we run this program and we get this ni uh, nice plot. So the orange line is the result with the nearest rounding. Um, and instead, this is the distribution of, um, uh, of the result of the sum computed with stochastic rounding. And we can compute some statistics on this distribution. You can see the extrema are within, I don't remember now, I think it's 130 from the um, center. Yeah, because the center, the mean of the distribution is almost exactly the expected result of 3,000 times 0 0.9. Uh, standard deviation is uh, about 29. Uh, the median is exactly um, 2,700. 
Uh, okay, so this is still not always um, e e approximately equal to the expressed area result, but still it's pretty close. Mm, sorry. Is it the longest axis and time numbers are the other runtimes? Mm -hmm. Most of those cells I saw 684 microseconds. Was that the runtime of that cell? Ah, yes, and this is Pluto, not the bus. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yes. No, okay, so I have something later about this. So we can also solve a differential equations uh, on the IPU uh, using a package called the um, defect Q, uh, GPU, which again, it's uh, a misnomer at this point. Um, so what we are doing is to uh, solve the uh, lot of Terra system, so the prey and predator system, uh, using uh, half precision with um, stochastic rounding enabled and disabled, so we can compare the results of the two, and also um, on the on the CPU to see um, like which will take as a, a ground truth. Um, and I'm generating here basically it's complicated, but I'm generating a um, grid of parameters, so I can pass uh, um, 1,472 uh, different sets of parameters, and I can run these many uh, uh, equ uh, differential equations in parallel. So um, we can define the uh, function for um, for the system, uh, and the function for running this on the CPU, and then the very verbose program on the IPU for doing the same. A and then doing here the for loop for uh, running the program with a stochastic rounding enabled and disabled. We do this and we get for the runtime, we get with uh, nearest rounding, uh, the runtime is um, 14 uh, um, milliseconds and exactly the same with stochastic rounding. So again, this is very important because the GPU has a, a hardware support for a stochastic rounding. It has no performance, uh, no runtime uh, penalty. And we see the results. So this is, these are the results. So the, the blue line is um, double precision, which again, we take as uh, the truth. Uh, the orange is uh, nearest rounding in half precision and the green is uh, stochastic rounding uh, with uh, half precision. And you can see that stochastic rounding basically makes half precision useful. <laughs> like you, you, you recover a precision that you lost. I started from this plot because it has a very bad uh, result for, uh, for um, nearest rounding. If I can change the uh, parameters here to uh, look at another plot, you can see in a few seconds that, yeah, it's not as bad, but still, you can see the difference between nearest rounding and stochastic rounding for half precision. And we can also look at the other variable in our um, equation. Uh, yeah, so again, uh, you can see that the uh, stochastic rounding is always recovering uh, precision lost uh, with a um, low precision floating point numbers. Uh, last bit is automatic differentiation. I will go very quickly, but I assume that here everybody knows about enzyme, uh, like um, difference, the auto differentiation engine, which works at the LLVM level. And this is great because in this way we can use this to compute the derivatives of our programs uh, at compile time before sending to the device. So uh, on the device, we will just run the exact derivatives of, of our programs. And uh, yeah, some examples of using Enzyme. And what we want to do is to um, minimize the Rosenbrock function using a, a derivative computed by Enzyme. But again, the uh, Enzyme will be run basically on the host, which is great. Uh, so this is the function definition of the Rosenbrock function. This is what it looks like. Uh, for those who don't know it, it's basically this function which has this very narrow valley. So when you try to minimize this function, it's very easy to get into this valley, but it's very hard to find the actual global minimum, which is this point one one, because yeah, you, you get stuck somewhere in here. This is also what it looks like from, from the top. So again, the minimum is this spot. Um, so this is the uh, gradient of the Rosenbrock function, and we can ask uh, Enzyme to compute this. I think the, uh, this is the second argument, which is easier to read. Uh, there is basically here the um, x squared. Ooh, what was it? So this is x squared. So um, computing, uh, yeah, multiplying the first argument. Then we sub subtract this to um, y, which is the second argument and multiply the result by 200. So yeah, Enzyme was able to compute the derivative correctly, which is a good test. Um, and so yeah, I'm now running another program. 
uh, minimizing the uh, Rosenberg function using uh, ADAM uh, algorithm. And this was nice to implement because it looks exactly like the paper. If you like compare side by side with the uh, paper, the code is exactly the same. Um, and I'm returning the number of steps um, after which we stopped. So we, when one of the conditions, the stopping conditions uh, were met. So again, we create a range, a, a grid of parameters, uh, no, sorry, of parameters of the initial points. And then we see how many um, iterations we, we took to, to stop the minimization process. Uh, so we, we run this program on the IPU. Um, so we have uh, 33,000 points and it took about 30 seconds to run. And this looks like this. Um, so we can try to zoom in around one one and as a sanity check it took just one step so z is the number of iterations the actually the square root of the number of iterations and if you start from the global minimum it didn't move so it's okay but you can see that in general when you are in the valley it took very few iterations to stop to find some conditions to stop but if you get far away from the valley um, it takes longer and longer uh, before reaching some uh, solutions um, and if you want here, there is the um, LLVMIR of the program, which is actually basically this. Yeah, it's basically this because the rest is uh, metadata. Uh, but again, this is great because you are generating very short code to run on the device. Uh, so conclusions, how did it go? So every time that I was asking for help in the GraphCore um, uh, Slack, because I was having some problems, the average answer that I got was, you are the first one trying to do this. Great. <laughs> yes, I, 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 could tell, I could tell that, yes. <laughs> um, what we achieved. So we developed the first uh, um, third-party programming model for the IPU, uh, so in a language which is not supported by GraphCore. Uh, and this was made possible by uh, the uh, LLVM compiler uh, framework. Uh, which, again, I think it's a, a great su success story for Julia for using LLVM. Um, so Julia allowed us to do um, general pass pu purpose programming on the IPU using a high-level programming language, which, again, is something new for, for this device, uh, outside of the machine learning uh, niche. Uh, so we propose non-trivial programs, I think, using third-party packages, which is also something that you cannot do on the IPU using the C++ programming model for, for the kernels, because yeah, you cannot link uh, external uh, um, uh, binary libraries. And uh, also thanks to uh, Julia's introspection and uh, uh, metaprogramming capabilities, we slightly simplified how you write uh, IPU programs. We could also use a single and half precision floating point numbers, including stochastic rounding. Um, we also did the first use of the GraphCore LLVM fork. Um, overall, I was not concerned about performance, but I showed that uh, at least in the simple Pi example, performance was actually slightly better, or anyway, compa um, comparable with uh, competitive with the C++ one. There are some limitations, of course, uh, but uh, some of them are in common for, uh, with the uh, GPU um, ecosystem. So um, you cannot generate, uh, you cannot run any arbitrary uh, Julia code on GPU. Uh, we could only um, wrap a subset of the popular and poplips uh, libraries. Um, we are currently using a light C++ scheme for uh, defining the vertices, the, defining the, cor uh, the cordelets. Ideally, we would like to uh, define everything in uh, LLVMIR. Uh, we targeted Colossus, but this is very experimental, so more work will be needed to uh, improve this. We didn't figure out how to use uh, integrate GPU arrays. I, th I think this is a hard problem because how you program a, a IPU is very different from how you program an IPU. But if someone has some ideas, please come talk to me. Uh, currently, uh, I have no access to the tile level uh, threads. So I'm actually, the maximum parallelism that I could achieve it was uh, 1,472 uh, um, cores. So I didn't have access to the individual threads. But I discovered the last week that it should be possible to, to do that. So I will look into that in the future. And if you wanted to try Julian the IPU, you can actually can, because there is um, a cloud service provider called uh, Papers, uh, Papers, uh, Paperspace, which offers free time uh, on IPU. So if you go to this uh, uh, repository, uh, Julia IPU demo, you will find the instructions to run this. And with that, I'm finished. <laughs> <laughs> All 
All right, we have one minute for questions. I'm curious how stochastic rounding is supported at the hardware level. A little bit off topic. So basically how they... Is, yeah, how is stochastic uh, rounding supported is the question. So they have a um, PNRG on hardware, and this is connected to the um, uh, floating point unit. So it's just all the same on the same chip, and uh, yeah. Accessibility shortcut. Mm -hmm. Okay, with that, let's thank Jose one more time. Mm -hmm.